congratulations to DeAndre Hopkins. D-Hop just signed the biggest contract for a non-quarterback in the history of the NFL. It'll see him get paid over $90 million over the next five years. But the Cardinals overpaid for him. And I mean way overpaid for him. Let's talk about why. Let's get to the details of this contract first. This was announced just earlier today on September 8th. DeAndre Hopkins signs a two-year extension worth $54.5 million, $42.75 million guaranteed. What that means is he will be paid $27.5 million in the final two years of his now five-year deal. His total five-year accumulation will be $94 million. That is the biggest contract ever signed by a non-quarterback and smashes the previous record for biggest contract signed by a wide receiver, which I believe was Julio Jones. By now, you've already seen, obviously, the title of this video, and you know that the premise here is that the Cardinals overpaid for DeAndre Hopkins. But I want you to know, this has nothing to do with me having anything against DeAndre Hopkins as a player. DeAndre Hopkins is an incredible wide receiver, might be the best one in the league. I mean, you can see his numbers right now. This guy is absolutely special. But my argument is that any amount of money that even approaches this figure for any wide receiver is a massive, massive overpay, no matter who it is. It could be Jerry Rice himself. He would not be worth this amount of money. Let's talk about why. Over the last 17 seasons, all right, every, of every single leader in receiving yards, only five of those leaders were on teams that made the playoffs. None of them ended up winning a Super Bowl. Of those five, Michael Thomas this past year, Antonio Brown twice, Reggie Wayne and Steve Smith, all of them had Pro Bowl quarterbacks along with them. All of them. Over the last 17 years, that same 17 year period, when it comes to receptions, nine of the last 17 leaders in receptions made the playoffs. Three of those times, it was Wes Welker. Again, all had Pro Bowl quarterbacks, and in three of those instances, the same player led in receptions and also led in receiving yards, that being Michael Thomas and Antonio Brown twice. Now, I tell you this to introduce my premise. My premise being that while a good wide receiver will help a good quarterback, a good wide receiver does not make a good quarterback. A good quarterback makes a good wide receiver. How do I know that? Because some of the best wide receivers that we have seen in the game over the last 17 years, because we're dealing with this, with this time period here, some of the best receivers that we've seen over that last period of time have not even made the playoffs. And none of them won Super Bowls. You look at some of the great wide receivers of the last few years, Julio Jones, Pierre Garçon, Calvin Johnson obviously comes to mind, Roddy White, Andre Johnson. These guys were by and large not paired with elite quarterbacks. Julio Jones, the year that Matt Ryan won the MVP, fair enough. Does that necessarily mean that DeAndre Hopkins is gonna be on a team with a losing record going forward? No, not necessarily. Again, I'm just introducing my premise to you that a good quarterback makes a good wide receiver, not the other way around. Now, the important part here is when we talk about the last 10 Super Bowl winners. Let's, let's look at the list right now. The last 10 Super Bowl winners. Now, here are each team's top ranked receiver in terms of receiving yards, okay? Two in the last 10 years were ranked in the top five. That being uh, Tyreek Hill with the Chiefs this past year with the Green Bay Packers. I believe that was that was Greg Jennings. Oh, and the, and the, the Giants as well. That was uh, Victor Cruz, I believe. So three times, top five. Now what you can see is you are as likely to land outside of the top 25 with your best receiver as you are to land inside the top five. You can see that the Patriots, the Eagles, um, and the Seahawks 
and the Ravens all did tremendously well while having receivers that were not ranked in the top 10 or the top 20, or in some cases, even the top 30 when it comes to receiving yards. Now, they were successful because of receiving balance, because of team balance, good defenses, really good running games, great special teams. That's how those teams won. The Chiefs this past year won by explosion. They did not have a great defense. The Packers in 2010 at that time had the worst defense to ever win a Super Bowl. They won by explosion alone. And as you can see, that is not generally the way that you want to approach winning Super Bowls. Even the Denver Broncos, when they won their Super Bowl in 20, what am I, 2016? Did I get that year right? 2016? Even that year, the Broncos still boasted one of the best defenses that ever took the field. They just also had a, uh, a really solid offense. All of this means that good wide receivers actually have an inverse relationship to how well their team does, meaning the better a receiver you have, the worse your team is probably doing. The reason we know that is because there is a correlation in something else. Here, I will show you each team's ranks each team's rank in sacks that year, okay? And you will notice that a grand total of three of them even ended up in the top 10. Both the Broncos and the Ravens were well known to have poor pass blocking offensive lines. Both of those teams also had tremendous defenses. Both of those teams also had young, inexperienced quarterbacks for most of the year. Brock Osweiler for the Broncos after, when Peyton Manning was injured and uh, Joe Flacco for the Ravens. The outlier here being the Seahawks, who we know have always had a bad offensive line, and Russell Wilson is such an adept quarterback at moving in the pocket and getting out of pressure and throwing on the run that he still makes it work. That is the outlier. For the rest of the time, you have teams like the Patriots. Obviously, you have the Eagles. You have the Chiefs. You have even the Packers and Giants back in the day. All of these teams had great offensive lines that protected their quarterback. And so, what do you see? The better offensive line you have, the better chance you have of winning the Super Bowl. Unless Russell Wilson is your quarterback, you have a better chance of winning the Super Bowl with a better offensive line. The better receiver that you have, the less chance you have of winning a Super Bowl. Does that mean that I'm saying that a great receiver will reduce your team's chances of winning a Super Bowl? No, I'm not. What we're getting to is the fact that the Cardinals overpaid for DeAndre Hopkins, right? That is the end goal here. Let me show you something else. What we're going to show you now for each team is the highest paid receiver that year in terms of cap hit, okay? Now, you can see the names, and I'm just going to tell you the teams they played for. Last year, it was Kansas City with Sammy Watkins, okay? Fair enough. Tampa Bay, Houston, Atlanta, Detroit, Miami, Houston, Tampa Bay, Arizona, Dallas. Do any of those teams sound like consistent Super Bowl contenders to you? Those are the highest paid receivers that year, belonging to teams that are well known for precisely the opposite, not contending for Super Bowls. Again, does that mean that bad receivers or that good receivers make bad teams worse? No, absolutely not. What it means is teams that are not well run financially are more likely to spend big on wide receivers. You know how we know that? Because look at this final number over the last 10 years. Well, actually this is over the last eight because this is when these numbers were being kept. Super Bowl, the Super Bowl winning team that year, what was their spending rank for wide receivers on their club? The Chiefs and the Broncos both spent the most on their wide receivers the year they won. Everybody else, with the exception of the Patriots one year, was outside of the top 10. Two of them were outside of the top 25, that being the Seahawks and the Ravens, of 32 NFL teams. Teams that win Super Bowls do not spend money on their receivers. Teams that spend money on their receivers do not win Super Bowls. By the way, the Cardinals, before DeAndre Hopkins' new contract, 
they will be spending the seventh most in the league on wide receivers, joining the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals as teams at the top of the list of wide receiver spending. I mean, if you want to take a look at that list, you have obviously the Chiefs who are spending a lot. You have the Bengals, the Bills, the Browns, the Cardinals, the Bears, the Giants. Are these teams that you would consider to be Super Bowl favorites this year? No, I don't think so. In a sport that does not have a salary cap, this would be a moot issue because you could just spend however much money you want. However, because there's a salary cap in football, then salaries on a team become what we would call uh, rivalrous, meaning that when you give your money to a player, that means you are depriving another player of that same amount of money. You are depriving the actual important pieces on your team of that same amount of money. There is a singular, one singular offensive lineman in the top, let me see, I believe that is the top 30 highest paid football players, highest paid NFL players in the league right now. A singular offensive lineman, okay? So what does that mean? It means that we're not, teams are not spending a lot of money on offensive linemen right now. The Cardinals, when, it, when you look at the top 50 highest paid offensive linemen in the NFL right now, the Cardinals have one, one of the top 50 highest paid linemen in the league right now. Does that mean every team has more than one of the top 50 uh, highest paid offensive linemen? No, it doesn't. But if you look at the list, which will be linked in the description, you will see who happens to be on that list of having highly paid offensive linemen. It just so happens to be teams that are going to compete for Super Bowls this year. I'm not necessarily saying that being highest paid means that you're good, but generally it's a good indication of what teams value and who teams value. And teams that value offensive linemen tend to win. Teams that value wide receivers do not. Everything I have shown you over the last 10 to 17 years, if a team values a wide receiver, if a team pays big for a wide receiver, that team does not win because you are preventing yourself from paying for offensive linemen, edge rushers, secondary, positions that do make a bigger difference on the football field. If you put me in an NFL game right now and had Tom Brady throw me passes, I, w I probably wouldn't catch a single ball. The replacement to DeAndre Hopkins is not me. The replacement to DeAndre Hopkins is an NFL caliber wide receiver. The difference between DeAndre Hopkins and an NFL caliber wide receiver when paired with a solid quarterback is I don't want to say negligible, but it's certainly something that you can work with. But the difference between, let's say, the highest paid edge rusher right now, that being Khalil Mack of the Chicago Bears, the difference between him and your average edge rusher is a lot bigger. That is a much bigger discrepancy. Khalil Mack is being paid less than what DeAndre Hopkins will be paid. And by the way, this is when DeAndre Hopkins, he'll start making that money when he is 31 years old. So you're paying a guy more than what Khalil Mack makes right now based on his performance when he's 31. The Arizona Cardinals have tanked their team for the next five years by locking themselves into this DeAndre Hopkins contract. Now that could change if Kyler Murray turns out to be a Russell Wilson level quarterback. That's really the only chance you have. If you have Russell Wilson, if you have Patrick Mahomes, if you've got Peyton Manning, you can afford to overpay on your wide receivers because your quarterback is going to get you out of trouble. Your quarterback is going to score a bunch of points and, and bring you past your defensive shortcomings, okay? If Kyler Murray does not turn out to be a Russell Wilson or a Peyton Manning or a Patrick Mahomes, the Arizona Cardinals have now essentially handcuffed themselves for the next five years. You are taking money away from positions that it needs to be in. The Arizona Cardinals are not good defensively and you are taking money away from improving your defense, taking money away from improving your offensive line. By the way, Kyler Murray, second in the NFL in sacks last year. Second, the Arizona Cardinals were. You are taking money away from improving that offensive line 
to give to DeAndre Hopkins, who we've just shown cannot help you win a Super Bowl in the absence of those other important pieces. This is another example of the Arizona Cardinals buying into wide receiver hype, seeing what DeAndre Hopkins can do, and saying, yes, we can pay for him. He is going to be worth it to help us win Super Bowls. But I'm telling you that he is not going to be. Wide receivers never are. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that DeAndre Hopkins is worth every penny that they that the Cardinals are going to pay him, but based on everything we've seen, he will not be. Now, if you disagree with anything I said, if you think I missed something, let us know in the comments. I really, really want to hear your opinions on this, especially if you are a Cardinals fan. I want to know where you come down on this. Do you love this move? Do you hate this move? Are you somewhere in the middle? Let me know in the comments. We really appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.